three of us were sitting in a, a dark basement quilting away on a peace quilt award that was due to be presented in just a couple of days. And we were feeling pretty tired and pretty overworked and a little bit sorry for ourselves that we were there alone working on it. And I shared something that I had been thinking about a lot of late, which was that I was feeling like we really ought to use our peace quilts to approach uh, people in power, our elected officials, in a really personal way. And then there was more silence, and we kept on stitching. And all of a sudden, Anne next to me throws down her thimble, goes, I've got it. We have to make a quilt, and we're going to get all 100 United States senators to spend a night sleeping under it. And I just looked at her like, you got to be kidding. Well, that was how our ninth quilt got started. So instead of making it all ourselves, we decided to try to recruit a square from every state in the Union and have each square be based on a child's drawing, a child's vision of peace. And we called it the National Peace Quilt. We decided to ask each of the 100 U.S. Senators to spend one night sleeping under this quilt and to make a statement in the logbook which accompanies the quilt, expressing their feelings, their dreams, and their visions about peace. When I slept beneath the quilt, when I fell into a deep sleep and dreamed of peace, believe it or not, <laughs> and a, 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 a peace conference uh, where uh, I saw the leaders of all nations gathered together and uh, uh, talking in terms of peace and, uh, the, and war as a method of settling international differences had been abandoned. And, he, and uh, my heavens, when the uh, alarm clock uh, rang and uh, I woke up, boy, I wore the biggest smile on my face that I've ever worn. <laughs> it's something that uh, makes you think about peace and of course uh, I think will be used all over the country to help people to think uh, about something that really we ought to all be thinking more of. It was kind of nice to just take it home, realize that so many of your colleagues had signed this and realize that uh, we ought to all be more concerned about peace than we are. Something like this gets children adults, men and women, people all over the country interested because it's something that literally people can identify with. No, I haven't slept under it yet. Maybe I know I'm scheduled to. I am scheduled to. You have to find Massachusetts so you can sign it. I think the effort with a quilt makes a difference. Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, Housing Act, uh, the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, those things didn't happen because people here in Congress, my colleagues, said, oh, let's pass this legislation. It happened because people like the people, uh, you know, the women in Boise were putting together this quilt, 
said, we're going to tell our representatives that something has to happen. It's the beauty of America. It's really the, the wonderful thing about this country. Can somebody toss me a needle, please? I remember quilting with Grandma when I was real little. She didn't do really fancy quilts then. It wasn't until she had more time to uh, start quilting. And it, when I was little, she had she was still working with Grandpa out in the fields in the day and then quilting at night. But I remember sticking the needle in and pulling it up and stick coming around and just going back and forth and doing about an inch while she did a half quilt almost. She'd say, I can't see this needle at all. You've got to thread it for me. <laughs> yeah, me too now that I can't see. <laughs> you know, I have this superstition sort of about um, the quilting. Sometimes we'll get into an argument about whether uh, Square needs more quilting or not. I have this feeling like the more stitches <laughs> are taken, the each better. stitch that's adds right. to the power of the completed mm. quilt. And I think that's because it, it means hours of people's lives. Our first quilt was completed in May of 1982. It was made as a gesture of friendship from ordinary people in Boise, Idaho, to ordinary people in the Soviet Union. We found 35 people here who were willing to make squares, depicting scenes of Idaho or scenes of life, things that we wouldn't want to see destroyed in a war. Somebody suggested to us that it would be appropriate to present the quilt to the Soviet Women's Committee, and so we did. And we asked them if they would send it to a town similar in size to Boise. We found out later that they sent it to a small town in Lithuania. When we made the quilt, it was a complete act of faith. We made it as a gesture of goodwill to the ordinary people of the Soviet Union. And now that we're here in the Soviet Union being so close, we felt that if we could make the personal connection with the people who received the quilt, that we would have come full circle. We didn't know if we'd get any response to that first quilt at all. And frankly, in some senses, it didn't matter. But when the response came, it was so wonderful. We got a Christmas card from Lithuania written in Russian that we had to have translated. It was such an energizing feeling. And from that first small response, our relationship with the Soviet Women's Committee has grown. And that's what's really exciting about it. Ultimately, I think the purpose of making that first quilt was it was a statement that we can't leave the process of diplomacy, of peacemaking to the experts, that ordinary people like ourselves have to be involved, we have to take the initiative, we have to make the effort if there's going to be peace on the planet. Well, just look at those trees. Can't you smell the breeze? Well, don't forget your skis. Cause this is Idaho. We got fish in the lakes. We got snakes, we got quakes. We ain't got no sweepstakes. Yeah, but we're gonna have the Pacific coastline any year now. Well, now I've been all kinds of places, from Honolulu to Hackensack. But they ain't got what we've got, and that's why I came back. We got beautiful hills. Watch out for that snowmobile. We got white water thrills here in Idaho. Where else would you want to go? But good old. Thank you very much. I'd like everyone to have a seat who is not waiting for ice cream so that we can begin the program. Welcome to the celebration of the 12th Boise Peace Quilt, the local peacemakers peace quilt. First, I'd like to introduce Heidi Reed, who has probably put the most stitches in the most Boise Peace Quilts. The Boise Peace Quilt Project was born of two mothers, Diane Jones and Ann Housewrath, mothers of young children who were searching for a way to help defuse the hostile world situation. They chose quilt making because they thought it would be a uniquely American gesture of friendship, and they thought it would be fun. 
lately, everybody uh, that we talk to, and we, we're getting phone calls. My son, very bored the other day, answered the phone and said, Mom, it's the New York Times again. <laughs> I, said, I thought we'd gotten to a pretty strange place. But everybody who wants to talk to us now says, uh, it's real nice, but why quilts? Why quilting? We feel peace quilting is a good avenue now, for it's such an apt metaphor for stitching together our ragged and torn world. Pete Seeger wrote us a word of encouragement as we were just embarking on our journey, and he gave us a thought which we've kept and shared as our motto. He wrote us, the quilt is a symbol of the world which must come, one new pattern made out of many old patterns. Then he added, we'll stitch this world together yet. Don't give up. <laughs> this is for the peace quilters. <laughs> I'd like to say something about the Nicaragua quilt, the next Boise Peace Quilt, which is in the back of the room. The Nicaragua Peace Quilt will hang in the schools, the youth organization, and the churches in various rural and urban cities and towns in Nicaragua. It is our way of showing the Nicaraguan people that we care very deeply about what's happening in their country. The Nicaragua quilt grew out of a sense that, as peacemakers in this country, we really needed to make a statement about the situation in which our own government was involved in creating war in Nicaragua. We felt that that was something we couldn't avoid, we needed to address. I think we have to be careful. I, I wouldn't want it to be construed as endorsing the Sandinista government, because we're not giving it to the government, we're giving it to the people. People in this town haven't been particularly warm to that quilt. Even right. this group hasn't been, until this moment, particularly warm to that quilt. And, that, and if we decide to do that, I think we've got to realize that, that there's probably going to be even more negative reaction given any connection with Daniel Ortega. This is there's a, a cost. Quilt. Yeah. There's a cost to our group. We've committed ourselves to uh, reaching agreement by consensus, which means that when you come to a conclusion, everyone in the group is able to live with that decision. And that means you have to invest a, a lot of time and a lot of uh, personal care in the process. And it can take us months <laughs> to reach a satisfactory and right conclusion about group action. We are making an enormous public statement. And it's kind of coming out of the closet for us, perhaps. And do we want to come out of the closet? And, and I think we've been struggling with that for the last nine months of this quilt, is how public do we really want to be? I mean, we can send it, and it will do OK in Nicaragua. It's not what happens as much in Nicaragua as what happens in this country with it. I think some of these same fears were expressed when the first quilt was made. I know Anne has told me stories of how frightened people were of uh, making a quilt for the Soviet Union and what the response in Boise would be. And we've just kind of evolved to this point. I was expecting a negative response, at least in part, to the Nicaragua quilt, because obviously that's a very political issue, and this is a very conservative community. We took the quilt around to churches on Sunday morning. We showed the quilt, explained what we were doing, and asked people to donate and have their names embroidered on the quilt. And the reception was overwhelmingly positive. We raised over $3,000 and purchased school supplies for a primary school in Managua. So our trip to Nicaragua last summer was to bring both the quilt and friendship and school supplies. The Peace Quilt Project, I think, seems very mild-mannered. Really, what I think what we're after is to try to change, try to, try to create a change at the grassroots from a culture of war to a culture of peace, from a culture of selfishness to a culture of understanding. And that's an extremely radical change. I mean, uh, you know, Einstein said, with the breaking of the atom, everything changes except our way of thinking. I think if you're really a peacemaker in the modern age, what you're working at is changing people's way of thinking. You're, you're working at changing your own way of thinking, and you're working at changing the way of thinking of the community at large, and it's a tremendous job. Fix it. There's nothing we can do about the paint. I think we should start over. No. I think you should embroider over it somehow. Have you heard anything from Russia lately? I had a letter from Did you? Russia. Oh, from, yeah. from whom? Vladimir and <laughs> Vilnius. 
and he sent me books on Lithuania and asked me to order him a, a book on hang gliding. <laughs> well, we conceived the idea of cooperatively uh, making a peace quilt with our friends at the Soviet Women's Committee. And we proposed to them that they make a part of a quilt top and design it themselves, and that American women make a part of the quilt top, um, the American part to be made of 40 fabric portraits of real children, 20 of them Americans, 20 of them Soviets. And the Soviet women agreed to our proposal, and uh, in the months following sent us um, photographs of of Soviet children from all over the Soviet Union. And these were given to American seamstresses. Some of us stitched Soviet children and some of us uh, stitched uh, our own. Now, where is she? L look at her. Isn't she darling? She looks just like one of our kids. But see, the look at the dog. Isn't that dog great? <laughs> <laughs> I love that dog. dog. They yeah. wouldn't let me put the dog in. <laughs> wonder what, is this Russian? That's uh -huh. Russian. Uh -huh. Right. And she's from one of the Eastern Republics in the Soviet Union. I like her eye eyelashes. And, <laughs> and this one was done by a, a Hmong refugee woman of her daughter in Seattle. Here, Katie. Can you get that? You want to hold it? Let's see if it looks like, oh, it looks just it look like, like you. you. Oh, it does. Oh, it look does. Like Katie and it's beautiful. Oh, mine. Oh, that's, that's yours. Yeah. Oh, pretty. It is that's you. Can you hold it? Like that? Anyone else? I have a lot of various fantasies about what the Soviet section might be like, and I, my, in my worst nightmares, they're a different size than than ours. <laughs> they don't fit together, and it's late at night. I'm going to love telling about the squares, and this is so and so's, you know, child, and that kind of thing. Don't forget my grandson.